Chapter 16 Rin moved slowly through the underbelly of the city. According to rumour, this was where the Chris King lived. She thought it was ridiculous. No wizard would just sit down here, chatting to Kriska in the bowels of the earth while waiting for people to do bad deeds. Nevertheless, here she was, moving through ancient tunnels, trying to find a hidden wizard sitting on a throne. Cord would be chuckling like a tickled bear if he knew where she was. Rin grimaced. She moved further into the tunnels, her hooded face deep in shadow. Apparently Yor had been built on top of older cities hundreds of years ago, and these underground tunnels were actually ancient roads and buried alleyways. Rin could believe it. Even now the residents of Yor were building on top of buildings, it probably would be only a few decades until an entirely new city sat on top of the current one. Such a strange realm, she thought. It had been over 20 years since she had fled her own homeland, and she had still not got used to the disorder found on this isle. Even Rulorn, the jewel city of Winter's Edge, was a sprawling mess that grew out of no real planning. The cities back at her homeland were designed with purpose, all the streets spread out from a central palace like a perfect spider's web. Rin shuddered at the thought. A spider web was an apt metaphor. She had been lucky to escape. She glided over fallen rubble bathed in sunlight. Looking up, she saw a roof had collapsed, leaving a hole in the street above. She could still see people walking around it, going about their day in the upper city. She sighed. This whole place could collapse overnight. It had been easy to find her way into what the locals called the underbelly. There were a few well-known holes like the one above. Some of the alleys near the main street turned naturally into tunnels after just a few twists and turns. She was quite surprised how many people actually lived down here. Just below the surface there was a thriving market and an array of lodgings. There were also lots of Kriska down here too, moving purposefully deeper into the town's belly. A good sign, perhaps, pondered Rin. Rin was a practical woman, and she knew her chances of finding the Chris King were slim. There was a very good chance he didn't exist at all. And even if he did exist, the man hadn't been found in 50 years, and wizards were notoriously adept at staying unfound. However, she possessed certain advantages that few others had. Even now she was stretching out her co, burning the green as she searched for signs of life. She touched lightly on the more reclusive souls that lived several levels deep in the underworld. Their life force was weak. A wizard's would burn brightly. Of course there were ways to dampen your life force if you did not want to be found, but this took some effort. It could not be maintained indefinitely, only through concentration. Hopefully the Chris King wouldn't be expecting her. She looked over her shoulder. A pair of Kriska had been following her since she entered the tunnels. Rin stopped and turned around. The Kriska stopped also. One suddenly gazed up at the ceiling as if lost in thought. The other began intently examining its tail. Rin frowned. If the Chris King exists, his spies needed training. Rin took a step forward to crouch in front of the creatures. Tell Chris King I wish to speak, she said, her voice a soft hiss. The two Kriska cocked their heads as they eyed the woman. One began scratching its chin with its hind foot. Again she thought of Cord, chuckling happily. The man had been right on one count, however. No one wished to speak to her. Every wizard she knew of refused to talk. Many had already disappeared. Pirate Bowl and his gangs had spooked them. Indeed, some hooded youths had started tailing her this morning. She lost them easily enough, but Bowl seemed to have his eyes everywhere. It was clear he was hunting wizards, and Rin meant to find out why. At some point she would have to sit down and have a long chat with Bowl, she thought. But not yet, not while she was being subtle. For now Rin would stay in the shadows, and leave no stone unturned. Even if that meant looking for a made-up hermit who ruled over an army of small furry creatures. Suddenly she paused mid-step. The far edge of her coat touched on an old flavour, that she had not sensed in decades. A life force different from the No-Kos or the Kriska. It reeked of decay and corruption. Her co pulled back from it instinctively. She tentatively probed forward again, sending her co out like a gentle breeze. 
it swirled around five figures, all seeping tainted life force. Leakers, she hissed. Her lip curled in disdain, a whole hand of them moving slowly at the far levels below. Her mind raced. What were they doing here in Yore? Had they finally tracked her down? She dismissed the thought. They were far below her and moving deeper. They were hunting something else. And there was really only one thing to hunt down here. A few vague pieces fell into place. She had dealt with leakers before. They had hunted her when she fled her homeland. They were a twisted, corrupted version of an old monastic order called the Modashai Knights. The order had trained her. She thought she had left all of that behind. But now they were here, in Winter's Edge. That could only mean one thing. The Empire was invading. Leakers were usually sent in advance of the Empire's army to remove powerful targets. Targets like wizards. Rin took another mental leap. Bol must be identifying wizards for the Empire. But why had only one been killed? A misstep, perhaps. It would make more sense to identify as many targets as possible first, and then take them out in one strike. Rin frowned as her mind explored the possibilities. Leakers wouldn't work for Pirate Bowl. They thought themselves superior to the Nokos, especially a foreign Noko. There must be another powerful figure here, coordinating the Leakers to work with Pirate Bowl. Rin stopped exploring that avenue. She didn't have enough information to work with. But why work with Pirate Bowl anyway? Leakers were well versed in finding wizards. Because Bowl controlled the docks and the criminal enterprises of yore, the Empire's army would invade through the city. They would have an open gateway where troops could be transferred efficiently and without resistance. The king had made a mistake in turning his back on yore. Rin explored another idea. They were hunting down the Chris King now, because he was a wild card, something that could upset their plans of a smooth invasion. She felt comfortable with this conclusion. She considered the five leakers below. Could they offer her more information? She doubted it. Each hand was kept in a bubble, and only told what they needed to know. This group would have orders to find and kill the Chris King. Another possibility was they were just hiding down here, waiting for the go-ahead to strike at the known wizards. Rin frowned. She really should try get confirmation. She definitely couldn't leave them here. They lived to kill. Rin weighed up her options. She could try find cord for backup, but the leakers would probably have disappeared by the time she returned. No, she would have to deal with this now. Besides, there were only five of them. Her mind made up. She moved forward at speed and cloaked herself in shadows and silence. She dampened her life force. To a no-co, she would appear as a slight blur in their vision. Her anger was cold and calculating. Leakers represented everything that had destroyed her old world. They were the corruption that twisted something honourable and true into something ugly and evil. Weak, greedy men with a lust for dominance. They had sold their souls to dark magic in exchange for power to destroy others. It was easy to track them. They lost Ko through the runes carved into their skin, and this left a faint trail that hung in the air like a foul smell. She was upon them in moments. The five hooded men were not aware of her, though she felt the light touch of their Ko seeking out life. She had suppressed her life force to be barely readable, even to a master, and leakers never reach mastery. They never lived that long. They were crouching in a huddle, talking in a language of her old country. We cannot go much deeper. There is no sign of him, said one with a hiss. A rumour then? Ah, perhaps, but this underworld is vast. We must be sure. Rin nodded to herself. She was certain they hunted the Chris King. She decided to take a gamble to see if she could learn more. She released the shadow surrounding her, just keeping enough to cloak her face. She stepped forward. The Chris King is dead, she said simply the old language feeling clumsy in her mouth. The five men spun quickly, snapping into fighting stances. Rin noticed the imperfections in their form. One stood with too much weight on his front leg, another's lead hand settled outside his centre line. Rin sighed to herself. The motorshy had fallen far indeed. The sleeves of the men's robe slipped down to reveal corded forearms covered in carved symbols. Some of these glowed softly with a murky red light. Their co was weak, barely powering the runes. 
It would still make them far stronger and faster than an ordinary Noko, but they were a sickly pale shadow of a true Modashai knight. Who are you? Wynne demanded. Takoshi, I arrived yesterday, said Rin. My hand found and killed the Chris King. Only I survive. He was powerful. For you, perhaps. I have yet to meet my match. Rin bit her lip. Arrogance run through every leaker she had ever met. They made their pact with dark magic, because at their core they thought themselves superior to others, that they deserved power over lesser men. Perhaps tonight will be your night, she said evenly. I have orders to move on to the identified wizards now. Will your hand join me? We have received no such orders. We were told it would take place after the Wisp tournament. The hooded man paused as he shared glances with his companions. What was your name again? Takoshi. A cursed name. Rin decided to end the charade. She had her confirmation. I go by another name now. She pulled back her hood and cast aside her shadow. Her face was beautiful and delicate, with narrow slanted eyes and high cheekbones. Her head was shaven. A green circle was carved in her forehead. The Patria, hissed one of the assassins, as they all took a step back. I have stayed true to the old ways. The betrayal is yours, said Rin. There is still a price on her head, said one of the men. They spread out, moving cat-like into a line. Rin noted their footwork. It was poor. The men drew on their co, pulsing red through the runes in their forearms, increasing their strength and speed. To Rin's eye, the red glow looked feeble and weak. She settled softly into a low stance and rolled back her sleeves. Her arms were covered in shimmering symbols. She pulsed her co, and her own runes burst into a blinding kaleidoscope of light. Reds, blues and greens cast hard shadows over the walls. The men squinted against its brilliance and took an involuntary step back. She moved forward, faster than the eye could see. The end of chapter 16. And if you enjoyed that, please leave me the generous tip of one like and subscribe if you'd like to catch more content. Thanks again for listening. I'll catch you soon. Bye.